There it is. But look, just look how well camouflaged it is. A big grey animal just feeding away there. So amazing, we stood here for a while and couldn't see it. But we could hear them, you see, and I've said this many times before. When you are in the bush, it's not just relying on your eyesight. You need to use your other senses too, so your sense of smell and especially your hearing, because often you'll hear animals before you see them. Just like this elephant. Oh, and one of my favorite birds is calling at the moment, the black-crowned chagra. Something like that. Here, if it calls again for us. I'm trying to see if there are more elephants through there. I can only see the one. Uh, there definitely are others. I can hear some other branches breaking. Sassy B, you are exactly right. It's amazing that something so large can hide so well. There we go. Look, and you, this is actually, this is wonderful. These, these gray ghosts almost appearing out of the misty morning through the thicket like this. This is such a wonderful sighting. I mean, look at that. You can barely see them. And all of a sudden, these elephants are just emerging from the bush, from the mist. And they're coming even closer towards us. Isn't that wonderful? You can hear the ground hornbills calling in the distance. I don't see any others. What a nice start. Elephant. My favorite. Some of you are saying this is such a peaceful sighting, Ellie's elephant in the mist. And it is, it really is. And it's, I think it's a, it's lovely to just sit and, and listen to these animals. Now, if I had guests on the vehicle with me now, I'd probably just keep quiet and wouldn't have to speak about anything. Because the sounds at the moment, there are a lot of birds calling. You can hear the elephant crunching the, or breaking branches and moving through the grass. Just listen to the sounds for a second. Now, I'm not sure if you can hear that background chagra. I'm almost certain you can. And Pulling around us. Something like that. I mean, look how that elephant disappears through the foliage at the moment, the dry gray bark and the, and the brown leaves helps even the elephant camouflage Now, uh, Bree, you asked about the, the stomach grumblings and would they carry further. 
So, Bribri, it's not actually a, a stomach grumble. It's not, it, it sounds like it is, but it is actually a vocalization. It's not a, a stomach grumble. It's a vocalization that guttural grumbling sound is in actually a vocalization. Now, people have made that mistake for years and always said, oh, listen to the stomach grumbles because that's what it sounds like but it's not it's actually the vocalization from the elephant um and Bri Bri, it can it can cover quite a large distance but the theory is that the elephants pick up on those vibrations and those sounds through the ground they have incredibly sensitive feet and sense receptors in their feet that can pick up on the vibrations and that's how the elephants are said to communicate with one another so in on a morning like this it won't necessarily affect i suppose how far that sound can carry um with lions and leopards it probably won't carry as far the roar or the or the um sawing of a leopard and that, that won't carry as far because the air is very thick at the moment because there's a lot of moisture around so chances of it chances of it make or covering further distances are unlikely those clear clear crisp winter mornings are usually when you can hear them further let's see i'm going to move forward a little bit maybe get another view of these elephants it's just the two of them Just off to the side here now. I was hoping we'd bump into a honey badger around this area because we often see their tracks around here. But no sign just yet. Chitty chat, chitty chatty Megs. <laughs> you asked if these are two males. It looks like they are two males. Meg, I can't see the, 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 the one in the distance is also definitely a male. Um, nice round forehead. Um, the males generally have rounder foreheads as opposed to the females with angular foreheads. Um, but yes, Meg, they are two males and that's why they are moving around by themselves. Often you get these younger males split away from the herd and move around together. Sometimes they meet up with the big dominant bulls and these bulls teach them how to be successful. But these are two males, Meg. It's yet using its foot there to break the branches. Feed on the bark at the moment. Elephants this time of year feed on a lot of bark because there's still, there's still some wonderful nutrients. Oh. A little bird that it shook its head at. <laughs> Looked like a drongo, perhaps. Now, you might just be able to see a little orange speck in the middle of the screen. Just to the left of that elephant. That's the sun starting to peek through. Look at that. There we go. Excuse me a second, let me just jump on the radio. Uh, good morning, Mike Byron here. No updates just yet. Taylor and I are out at the moment. Um just two um elephant bulls on that new on that new road that goes past that repeater. Yeah, a firm. I think Taylor had a brief visual of him last night. He crossed over onto Simbambili, um, as well as the Nkuma Pride and those two coalition members.
amazing to see how, how they use their trunks and look looking for food looking for foliage that's what a nice start when you see these two ellie bulls moving through the through the thicket all right well let's head to taylor who's apparently got a better view of that beautiful sunrise for us